We're gonna. This is kind of nice. It's kind of small and intimate, and we all know each other here, so um, that's good. So I won't have to go through some of the things that, like introducing myself, since you guys all know who I am. Um, and anybody who's on Facebook Live will know who we are anyway. So we won't have to go through that. Um, and we did do this one before, but I don't think anybody came to the sugar. Did you come to the sugar class last time? No. Okay, so I don't think anybody came to the sugar mm -hmm. class last time. So this will be none of this will be reviewed. Well, this is all new information. Mm -hmm. So this is good. Um, uh, who are Karen and I? We are DoTerra wellness advocates. You guys all know that. And very little of this has to do with DoTerra. Um, we just do this uh, for the community. Um, we talk a little bit about how we fund this, and that's through our DoTerra business. Um, but this is purely educational. So, and maybe I'll hit a little bit on doTERRA later on. And I always like to do this. This is fun. Um, I did this last time and I'm going to do it again. So what questions do you have to start out with? Any questions? You came to a sugar class, so you've got to have questions with regards to sugar. And we're going to write them down. But I don't have a... Do you need both? Top shelf. Top shelf. Oh, there they are. Those may just be much. Blue. How much is too much? Mmm. Are there oils that would replace the sugar, or could replace the sugar? My question kind of goes along with, is all sugar bad? It's, okay. you know, should we go to absolutely no sugar? Is, is that the goal? Okay. And can you do that? Is honey that really good of a substitute? Honey and molasses and all of those the more natural uh, uh, maple syrup. That's what I'm trying to think about. Okay. Honey and maple syrup. Two L's or two A's? Two S's. Period. And then oh, we agree to go. Yeah. Honey, molasses, maple syrup. Okay. Are they good substitutes? kind of with the stevia and truvia, how, how okay are they or not? Stevia and truvia are the same thing. Anything else? Otherwise we can move on. All right, that's a good list because it almost fits the whole board. Although the oils class, but we had like 20 people at the oils class and we had the whole board filled, so that's all right. I do have one more all right. thing you put it up there somehow. Years ago, you know, 
probably before you would remember, but the CNH uh, sugar commercial, mm -hmm. CNH sugar, mm -hmm. yeah. pure cane sugar from Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, is pure cane sugar like that? I mean, it's pure cane, so stevia is a natural. Mm -hmm. It it's not natural. Mm -hmm. Okay, Johnson. it's processed. Yeah. So is pure cane sugar, how does it compare with the honey, the maple syrup, mm -hmm. the stevia, it's the pure sugar? pure cane like raw sugar. Like raw, like sugar. raw sugar. sugar. Pure cane yeah. sugar slash raw uh -huh. sugar. Better? Than the white sugar. process. Yeah. 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 And how do you, well. We'll get to all these. Okay. All right. So here we go. First and foremost, what is sugar? So sugar is, well, sucrose. And so sugar, this is going to be our chemistry lesson a little bit. So um, sugar itself in any form, whether it's raw sugar, pure cane sugar, any of those, um, if it says sugar, it's going to be, um, it's a disaccharide. And that's what sucrose is. So sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose. If you know anything about chemistry, those are two rings. And those are combined with carbon, right? It's a carbon bond. We've heard about that in mm -hmm. chemistry class. So they're combined with one carbon or um, carbon and oxygen. So mm -hmm. those are they're bonded together. So how does how what happens when um, we eat sugar? So sucrose, those two molecules, you eat sugar and um, those two molecules, they, you ingest it, it gets it into your intestines, and because it is a very um, loose bond, they, they will break, okay? They break apart very easily, and they break into the monosaccharide, which would be glucose and fructose, those two molecules. And sucrose is 50% glucose and 50% fructose. Mm -hmm. So they're exactly the same as far as molecular, um, the molecular makeup, okay? So how does your body handle both of those, right? That's the question. Well, glucose, we know, is really good for you. There's nothing wrong with glucose at all. We, our body needs glucose. Um, every organ in our body uses glucose. Our brain uses glucose. We would have no brain power. We would have no energy at all if we did not ingest glucose into our system. And it is, um, it also stimulates, and once it goes into our intestines, it gets out into our bloodstream, and it stimulates insulin, insulin production right away. Insulin pro production ba basically says um, our blood sugar is going up, we need to lower our blood sugar, and we need to use this glucose as our main energy source. Instead of burning fat, we're going to burn this glucose. That's basically what it does. Um, it's taken up by all the cells, and it's used as our primary fuel source. This is called, an AT called the ATP process. Um, gets into our cells, it's burned, and then um, we go on. Excess glucose that we have gets uh, converted into glycogen, which is mainly stored in your liver or stored in your muscles, as um, mm -hmm. or lipids stored in the fat tissue itself. Okay, so glucose um, fairly um, benign. You need to use it, has to, we have to have it, and it's used by every organ. The other half of our sugar problem, the, the molecular makeup of sugar, isn't so great. Okay? So fructose, which comes from fruit sugar. So everything that you eat, whether it be an orange, an apple, whatever it might be, that all has that's fructose there. Mm -hmm. It is the sweet part of the uh, sugar molecule. So when you're eating sugar and it's sweet, it is the fructose that is making it sweet, okay? And so that's why when you eat an orange or anything like that, you're getting that fructose. The difference between an orange and just pure sugar is an orange has fiber, 
apples have fiber, mm -hmm. and so your blood um, insulin levels don't go up so quickly, um, and your body absorbs it at a much slower rate. Okay? So fructose gets into your bloodstream, and it does one thing. It goes directly to your liver for pre-processing. Okay? And the liver starts converting um, the fructose, and it converts into all sorts of things. Um, it converts a small portion of it into glucose and then sends it out into your bloodstream. Um, but most of it gets stored, and this starts what's called the lipogenesis process. Okay? Um, and this is fairly new. Like, this is fairly new research from Harvard Medical. They found out this is exactly what happens. And so, when your body, when your liver is converting, this lipogenesis process is starting, um, insulin is not um, stimulated, so fructose does not stimulate insulin at all, um, which becomes a problem because when you are, you need that insulin to lower your blood sugar, and if it doesn't do that, um, insulin resistance starts to occur. Um, also, Another hormone, after insulin is stimulated, a hormone called leptin is stimulated. It's a chain reaction. And leptin basically tells you that you um, are no longer hungry. Okay? So that's the... So they did this interesting study. Um, Harvard did. They gave... Um, I think it was 50 kids um, a... 20 ounce of Coca-Cola, which is somewhere around 320 calories, something like that, with over 85 grams of sugar um, in the form of high fructose corn syrup. And then they took um, the other half and did not give them, gave them water. And then they sent them off to eat. And they did this over a period of, I think the study was a six-month study. Oh, man. And they found that, not at the same time, but it was you know, over a period okay. of six months. They found that, um, and what they thought was because the calories that they were eating, that the kids who got the Coca-Cola would, would eat less than the kids who didn't get the Coca-Cola because their calories were up. Well, the exact opposite happened. The kids who had the Coca-Cola ate 20% more food than the kids who did not have the Coca-Cola. Mm. Wow. And they've tied that to the fact that leptin is not released in another hormone called ghrelin, is not, which is your satiated, I'm full, I don't need any more, or I'm not hungry any longer. Those are the hormones that are released. And so that, <clears throat> that is one of the problems with fructose. Another problem is, is that... Um, Fructose also gets converted into these um, small fat lipid deposits that sit in your liver, and they don't move from your liver. Um, over a long period of time, um, and they're finding not so long because it's happening in children, um, the age of 13 is the youngest, they get what's called fatty liver disease. Fatty liver disease is exactly the same as cirrhosis, except for it's not alcohol related. But we all know alcohol is a sugar, ethanol is a sugar, and so... Basically, the same chronic issues that you see with alcoholism, which would be cirrhosis, are, being, are starting to show up in, in children because of the high sugar intake that they're eating. So, fat is about deposits get put in the, into the liver, um, which creates what's called um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's what NAFLD stands for. Also, what gets produced, um, fructose, a byproduct of too much fructose, would be um, VLDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, um, gets deposited um, from your liver. You have also an increased production of uric acid. Uric acid causes gout. And so many people who have um, high sugar intake um, usually have gout problems later in life. Um, elevates triglyceride production, which triglycerides basically move out from your liver into your fat cells and create what's called visceral fat, which is the fat around your stomach, usually, <laughs> at this area. Uh, increase in production of free radicals, 
um, and then insulin resistance starts to occur um, after time because insulin does not get um, uh, stimulated um, with fructose. So you can see sugar becomes a problem um, only because it's the glucose molecule is tied to this fructose molecule. Um, that is why I believe um, we're all in a very friendly crowd here. I think God created fruit to be in fruit form, not squeezed into orange juice and that. Because you need one, it's very seasonal, and two, you need the what you need the fiber to go along with the fructose. The uptake of the fructose comes in much slower, um, and the sugar is um, insulin does not get um, does not get uh, released as quickly when you're eating a fruit as opposed to drinking like a fruit juice of some kind. Um, an eight ounce glass of my eight ounce glass of orange juice is an equivalent to eating about six to eight navel oranges at one sitting. We'd never eat six to eight navel oranges in one sitting, but we certainly would eat we would drink uh, an eight ounce glass. I mean, that's tiny. I remember I remember getting glasses of orange juice when I go to like a, a restaurant. It's like an eight ounce glass. I'm like. This isn't going to fill me up. Can you give me the bigger one? So, um, so that, that's basically what happens to us. Did I catch one of these? What happens to us? I think Karen and Chloe has that one, right? How does sugar affect you? Yeah, how does sugar affect you? Well, that's not the only way, but that's, that's kind of the, the biochemistry behind sugar. So, this is what I thought was interesting. This is, goes against the grain now. And we've always thought if you take a calorie in, you can, you can burn a calorie, right? You take a calorie in, you burn a calorie. It's just kind of this um, linear, linear equation. It works out really well. The problem is, is that's not the truth. Glucose, if you eat 120 calories of glucose, one calorie gets converted into fat. Fructose, on the other hand, if you, drink, if you eat 120 calories of fructose, 40 of those calories get converted into fat. And so a calorie isn't a calorie. So if you eat 120 calories of broccoli, it isn't the same as eating 120 calories of a Snickers bar. I always thought that was weird. And I talked this with your son-in-law, Chris. We were talking about this in the car last week or two weeks ago. He's like, yeah, he said, that didn't make any sense to me. He goes, he said, if I got a 2,000 calorie like, intake a day that I, I want to stay in, could I just eat 2,000 calories of worth of Snickers bars? And... And prior to, you know, kind of new research that has come out with regards to caloric intake, most nutritionists would say, yeah, calorie in, calorie out. Make sure they balance out and you're good. At, you're good. New studies say, uh-uh, that's not how it works. Not how it works at all. You cannot take in, because there are a lot of people that work out a ton, all the time, burn lots of calories, but cannot lose weight. They can't. You get to a point where you just can't lose any more weight. And... Part of it is what you're eating. Because it doesn't even matter how much you work out, it automatically gets converted into fat. Just the way that the liver processes it, it gets converted into fat. So you can't do anything more about it. It just automatically gets done. Amongst all of the other byproducts that you get from um, the fructose molecule. So what does all this mean? Um, since 1980, we have increased our caloric intake by 280 calories. That is, since two, that's the last 40 years, roughly, a little less. Um, fat consumption, ha as a percentage of our diet, the fat consumption has decreased by about 10%. So we know it's not the fat that's the problem. Okay, Protein consumption as a percentage of our diet has decreased since 1980. So it only leaves one other area for us to increase our production, our, our caloric intake. Anybody know what the other one is? Proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Okay? And it's not grains and whole grains and things. It's refined, mostly refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup, mostly um, through um, what we drink on a daily basis. Mostly. 45% um, of the caloric um, increase is sodas, fruit juices, um, 
and then added sugar in products that never had added sugar before. Mm -hmm. um, interesting. So anybody had know what happened in about 1980 from a dietary standpoint? Does anybody know what happened? What we were dealing with in 1980? I think that's when it wasn't it the whole low fat, the whole low fat. Low fat. Do you know why? Oh, yeah. Working out. And, and so all that people stuff stopped. Too. Offense. The okay, diet so, thing. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, a okay, so this is an interesting an interesting historical thing, and I'm a history guy. So um, in the 1970s, they were starting to find out that sugar wasn't very good for you. Okay? So the Sugar Association and large large manufacturers of food said, oh, this isn't good. People are starting to catch on, or I don't know, they, they don't I don't think they said it this way, but they're basically saying, oh, not good, people aren't turning towards sugar, so we need to do some studies on sugar, the Sugar Association. And they hired a guy by the name of Ansel Keys. Ansel Keys was a professor at the University of Minnesota, and he is the one who wrote the paper that said, mmm, fat is horrible for you. Added fats in your food are terrible for you. This went before the FDA, and the FDA made this huge announcement that cardiac disease was result of high fat diets. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so this huge push came out to lower the fat in all your foods, and that's when it came, everything became low fat and light and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. But the problem was, is when they pulled the fat out of everything, what, is, what did things start to taste like? Wonderful. Garbage! Everything tastes like garbage when, when you take the fat out of it, so they had to add something to it. Well, they added sugar to it. So 80% of everything in your grocery store today has added sugar in it. So they just, they, they found out that fat wasn't all that bad for you. Actually, dietary fats are really good for you. Animal fat is good for you. Um, avocados, peanuts, nuts, all those things are really actually very good for you. And they don't um, add to your, uh, to a um, high LDL cholesterol. But so we had all these problems, so they pulled the fat out of everything, and then they raised the sugar content and everything, and what happened? So this is our obesity rate um, from about 19, well, 1971. See where they, where they jumped? 1980. Just kept going up and up and up, and they continue to go up today. And so um, obesity rates went up. Well, what happens when obesity rates go up? Oh, this is all, this is, this is, this is also um, in children. So this is obesity rates in kids. 1976, 1980, you can see the obesity rates. So now almost 20% of kids are obese. Um, and that's, the correlation is right there. 1981 is exactly when this, when, when the light and no fat diets came out and they started adding sugar to everything. So you can't go into any, go into a store and turn something over and it has added sugar in it. Things that you shouldn't even, there's no reason. Like bread, most bread, you don't need the added sugar in the bread. You don't need added sugar in ketchup, but it's chock full of added sugar. Everything is in there. Um, basically, if you don't want added sugar, just go around the outside of the grocery yes, store. Right. Shop there. Yeah. And you probably won't see as much added sugar. But even in meats these days, sometimes they're in the solutions that they're pushing into, they're having they're added adding sugar into those. So as a result of that, <clears throat> since nineteen eighty, cancer has gone up, heart disease has gone up, diabetes has jumped almost um, seventy five percent. Um, it used to be one in I think there was, it was like one in six, one in seven, um, and now it's going to be down to about one in three people get type two diabetes by the time they're mm -hmm. 15 years old. Um, mm -hmm. Liver disease has gone up, and the depression has gone up. Mm -hmm. All of these have gone up. And that's the reason. Yeah. Basically, everyone, the American diet is chock full of this. I thought it was interesting, Campbell's soup. Which everyone thinks tomato soup is really good for you. You turn over the label on tomato soup and it's just got tons of sugar in it. I think it was like, you might as well just eat a cookie instead of eating some Campbell's soup because it's got Don't more sugar in it. it. I know, but it is. It, it's, it's, you might as well eat a cookie. Yeah, you might as well eat a cookie. So, the trend now. I don't know if you 
you've seen the trend, but the trend is here, right? And so um, all these alternatives you see on all the packaged foods, no high, no more high fructose right. corn syrup. So they, they pull off high fructose corn syrup off there. Um, pure, made with real sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup. Um, Agave nectar, move to agave because it's better for you. It's natural. Molasses, really good for you. Honey is good for you. Um, maple syrup. So the question is, um, these we went over. Cane sugar and refined sugar is no difference. Just use cane sugar. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's no difference in it. Just they just spin it. So they take essentially they take the molasses out of it. So it doesn't really matter. If you're going to use sugar, just use sugar. The cheap stuff it doesn't matter. Um, so pure cane, raw sugar. Um, maple syrup. Um, maple syrup, um, its fructose level is higher than, than, um, it's higher than um, pure cane sugar. So, actually, it's probably worse for you than um, sugar itself. Agave is horrible for you. Don't, 72% is fructose as opposed to um, sugar, which is 50% fructose, 50% um, glucose. So your glucose to um, fructose ratio is way off here. Same with molasses, it's a little lower. Um, now, what about like high fructose corn syrup? Some high fructose corn syrup is a ratio of 42% fructose and 50 some odd, um, or yeah, 52, 50. 58, 42-58 mm -hmm. um, glucose to fructose. So high fructose corn syrup is actually in better for you. Some versions of high fructose corn syrup are better for you than pure cane right. sugar. Right. sugar. However, <laughs> however, now high fructose corn syrup is being, because it was synthesized in a lab, and because fructose is sweeter than glucose, and it's cheaper for them to manufacture it, um, it now comes in a 60-40 ratio, so 60% fructose to 40% glucose, which is in most sodas today. And so your high fructose corn syrup ratio is higher in fructose than it is because it's cheaper for them to produce. Now they're coming out with a um, high fructose corn syrup 90-10 ratio, so 90% fructose to a 10% ratio, and, and that's because they can use smaller of it to hit what's called the bliss factor. In the 1980s, there was a uh, scientist who worked for Dr. Pepper Corporation, I don't know if you know this or not, and I don't, Dr. Pepper was, is that PepsiCo? Not really sure, but he was a chemist on um, working, the lead chemist for Dr. Pepper. In the 80s, he found out there was a um, a sugar point, a fructose point, where people would, um, it hits that bliss point, where you want more of it, okay? You go above that, and people don't want it. You, know, you go below it, and people will crave it. And so there's this point, and every, the food industry uses this equation everywhere, in everything, from your pasta sauces, to your fruit drinks, to everything there is out there, they use what's called the bliss equation. Um, so they know exactly how much sugar you want, so that you continue to eat the sugar and you continue to crave that. And so, <clears throat> so the bliss factor is there, and that's why everything is added. That's why they add sugar to everything. Um, so, are these any better for you? Honey up in the upper right-hand corner. So that's a 50-50 ratio. Um, actually, it's a little less than 50-50 because there are antioxidants in honey. Um, and depending on if you're going to eat it, I would do it uh, local honey because it does have the pollen and some of the things that would help with seasonal allergies, things of that. So the local honey is probably a little better for you and it's the same ratio essentially as, as sugar. And so, um, so use honey, local honey, local raw honey. If you're not using local raw honey, then it doesn't matter, just use sugar because it costs you more. <laughs> but if you're going to use anything, I would use local raw honey. Um, and the molasses, it says we like it because it's pure, pure cane. Yeah. yeah. That's what they natural. Oh. It is natural. Yeah. So I want to hit up 
We answered a bunch of those. Questions. Yeah, we answered <laughs> yeah. a bunch of them. So, how much is too much? We didn't answer the first one up there. Okay, so um, it's inevitable that you're going to get added sugar in your diet. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, so, I tried to stay below um, six teaspoons of added sugar a day. And that's kind of what the, well, what the World Health Organization says, and most Harvard Medical said, you know, has come out and said you should really stay below six teaspoons a day, which is 24 grams of added sugar. That doesn't include fruit, but that would include added sugar. So you mean even on cereal or? On cereal, in okay, cereal, anything. So whatever you're looking at in the back, whatever the sugar content is, you keep it below 24 grams a day. You is it hard? Total. 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 Great. Isn't there like a recommendation of how many grams of sugar there should be per serving? Yes. So I mean, you look for what, like between yeah. five and eight grams or something like that? A Is total that... of twenty-four total in a day. Doesn't yeah. even matter where it comes from. Um, so I don't know, I don't have anything that has sugar in it. Um, but for instance, um, like a cookie, uh, like a standard sugar cookie has about thirteen grams of sugar in it. So that you you can have two of those in one day, and that's your total um, sugar can take for the day. Yeah. Oh, else. here, here we go. Here's a coke. Here's a coke. Uh, Forty-two. Um, so this coke uh, has 24 grams of sugar in it. Oh yeah. This chocolate milk has 27 grams of sugar in it, and that is a Per serving? Or yes, per but that's God one cup. Yeah. So, so that thing has four cups in it. Right? Yeah, so there's a, this is a four cup. Yeah. So one cup mm -hmm. of this is going to have 27 grams of sugar in it. Mm -hmm. This is probably, one can is a serving size, so it's better, it's actually better to drink the Coke than it is to drink the milk. If you're looking sugar. The chocolate milk. If you're doing the sugar. If you're doing the sugar. Um, and then this, which is uh, peach iced tea. This is terrible. This, yeah, 20. Uh, so this is 25 grams. And isn't that for the whole That's one, one, one serving. One okay. So this isn't terrible for you, but you drink this and it. That's it for the day. That's it for the day. So yogurts, for instance, yogurts probably have somewhere around 10 to 12, the small um, grams of sugar in them. Uh, Greek yogurt has about 8 to 10, somewhere in there. Um, so you keep it below that. And, um, I've, I've done a lot of other things. You know, I've been working outside more, but I have kept my sugar intake down to less than 6 teaspoons, and I've lost 25 pounds since I got here. And I feel better than I ever have ever felt. Um, so, that's kind of the, the how much is too much. Probably over over six teaspoons a day, which is really hard to get to. Not easy. Is all sugar bad? Yes. All sugar is bad, I think. I think all sugar is bad. I don't think there's any redeeming qualities in sugar, and I think the, the research has come pretty much full circle on that. In that form right there. Yeah. Right there. I, I think it's... Um, but, I mean, can you... I still eat cake, and, you know, those are things that you can do. I mean, it's not that you can't do them. I mean, but remember, it's all part. Our, our culture has just, we've really surrounded everything. Right. Birthdays, any events that we have, is based, everything is full of sugar. And our culture has done that. Yep. Um, so, why is sugar bad? I think we went into the reason why sugar was bad <clears throat> for you. If it was 100% glucose, it wouldn't be. And that's why people can carb load. So people will, because carbs turn directly into glucose, and they don't have that problem. So runners, anybody, athletes, look carb load before, and they don't have problems usually with weight or any of these other, um, mm -hmm. any of these other um, chronic diseases that occur, because it doesn't turn. There's no fructose there, so you're just burning it, and then it turns into some either glycogen or. Um, are there oils for that? Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to tie that in, so give me two seconds to figure that out. Should we go to no sugar? Um, I don't think it's realistic to go to no sugar, because everything has sugar in it. Um, interestingly enough, in 1800, 
um, the sugar intake was four pounds per year in the year 1800. So four pounds per year. Now we're, we're consuming 158 pounds per year, per person per year. In 1980, in 1980 it was 90. Then you can end up with scurvy. So you have to, it's all in moderation. Exactly, yeah. You know, so yep. you have to take the kind of the bad with the good sometimes. Right. The good with the bad. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think God created fruit for a reason. There were things that we needed. Our body needed that. Um, but, um, and actually, scurvy um, is citrus. It is citrus, so lime. That's why they call them limeys. But, um, but it's not actually the fructose in, the, in there that's, it's, that is combating the uh, scurvy. But... Yes. Um, it was meant to be eaten in that form, yes. and so that God created it that way. Um, so I don't think we can go to no sugar. I don't think that's even possible. Is honey or molasses, um, with the small exception of honey, local, raw? I don't think there's any redeeming qualities in molasses, syrup, maple syrup, or no good substitutes. Um, what about stevia? I think the um, the jury's still out on stevia. I don't know. However, what I do know is your brain uh, reacts in the same way to stevia that it does to sugar. And the problem with that is that um, your brain, when you eat sugar, a uh, hormone called dopamine is, is released. And so the more that you eat of it, the more that gets suppressed and the more that you're wanting and craving it. That's why people have sugar addictions. Um, People who are depressed and, and who have issues with that should really cut sugar completely out of their diet um, because of um, the way that your brain reacts to it. It really um, it has the same chemical reaction as cocaine, heroin, or any opiates. So it's a continual process. So anybody who has those types of issues really should cut sugar almost completely out of their diet. Um, it probably would help tremendously. According to Johns Hopkins research that was done about two years ago on sugar and its effect on your on, um, the brain, so jury's still out on stevia except for the fact that it does have that that um, it doesn't have the calories, it doesn't have the fructose in it, it has that addictive quality though. And why is that? Anybody know why that is? Why does our brain do that with sugar? Mm. It's an easy way to get calories into our system. And so for years, it, we needed calories. So long, we went into this, we were in this scavenger mode of we're not getting enough calories, we're not getting enough. And so we found something with high calories that was, um, fruit was good. And we're like, your brain would, would signal saying, eat more, eat more, eat, eat more, this is good, this is good, this is feeding our system. And the energy source was quick. That's what I was just going to say. Your body responds in a quick way. In a very, very quick manner to it. And so that's why our brain is wired the way it is. Well, the problem is that our brain is still wired that way, but our food supply is not short any longer. So, I don't know. I'll put a couple question marks here. Um, is pure cane sugar raw sugar? No. No, it's not. Not any better for you. All right, let's see. Are there oils for it? <laughs> um, Good segue. Uh, yeah, so that was the conclusion. Cut down on all sugar. Um, I think so. So I was thinking about this the other day, and so, there's so grapefruit is a great. So any citrus oils that you're going to put them in your water, okay? Um, because water intake is, uh, is automatically going to tell your brain, if you up your water intake, it tells your brain you're not hungry any longer. Um, so I think that's good, and, it, and it's a great substitute for any sugary beverage. So, and then grapefruit also is a natural appetite suppressant. So if you eat grapefruit, or if you um, do grapefruit oil or anything like that, it's an appetite suppressant. And so that's a good way to suppress the appetite so that you're not wanting or craving um, sugary treats at Which 10 o'clock at night. Which brings me to, I've never even tasted swim and sassy. Yeah. But does that seem to 
satisfy that I just need to taste something sweet? Um, it has grapefruit in it. I don't know. I haven't tasted it. You've had Slim and Sassy. I have not tasted Slim and Sassy because I am not sassy. I use it. Yeah. Yeah. But you're slim. Uh, I got a little okay. ways to go, but yes. Yeah. No, I put it under my tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the last month or so with moving. Mm -hmm. I, but I'm going back. And it has a little strange taste at first. I didn't like it in water. Yeah. But I'd rather put it in my... And it just, yeah. Uh, and a lot of people take it in capsules, too. Oh, that's a thought. So that you don't have to taste it. So a lot of people will take it in capsules. Um, but any of the citrus oils, I think, are great to have in water, um, and that will help. Wild orange is fantastic. Um, a lot of those are going to be a great substitute for it. And also, and seltzer. Like, if you are craving, I crave the, the bubbles. That's it. I like the bubbles, and I do like a little of the, the flavor to it, um, but then I don't get the sugar. I can't, I have a hard time, and, and Chris and I were talking about it, their son in law, we talk about health and stuff all the time. But <clears throat> we really struggled with when we ate donuts, we ate when, um, what day was that? Mother's oh. Day. Mother's Day. Day, we ate donuts. We went down to Room Donuts down in Denver, <laughs> and we all had all these donuts, and I think. Chris and I got through about half of it, and I said, I can't eat this donut anymore. I can't eat I just can't do it. And so you get to a point where the sugar becomes um, almost you just can't eat. Um, I, can't, I can't digest it. I have a problem digesting it, and my stomach will be horrible the rest of the day. So you do get to a point where you're kind of over that hump, and it's not a craving. Now, I still eat. I'll still have like a small piece of cake or at night, or I'll have a cookie or something like that. That's the extent of my. Um, that, that's the extent of my sugar intake. Um, and I know that it's not above six. So you didn't get the dozen Krispy Kreme donuts. I love it. And the thing is, I love Krispy Kreme donuts. The hot now, like when that sign was off. Oh my goodness, they melt. I know, you get, they give you one free, and then what are you going to yeah. do? You just walk in there and buy more. Yeah. It's <laughs> a great marketing. I know. A hot one. I know. 300 oh. calories per donut. Donut. 300? 300. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. So if you go in, if you go in the supermarket aisle, and it's just amazing. Like, eat a donut or eat. I don't know, granola, a ball of granola cereal. And the granola cereal has a bit a higher sugar content than a, than a donut does. And I was going to put that slide in there. I was like, three donuts and a um, cup of coffee. Is this better for you than granola um, with yogurt and some fruit and uh, a small glass of orange juice? And the sugar content in that yogurt and granola is off the charts. It's like three times the amount you should take in a day instead of just eating 20 grams of sugar in three donuts or whatever it is. Um, so it's just kind of watching out. Are we going to, now we're doing that. I was going to get into, so how do we subsidize us being here and doing these classes and things, which is a small pedal fest mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend. And so that is why our numbers are down. But um, like last time we had about 20 people here. So how do we subsidize? We subsidize it through our doTERRA business and oils. And so this is something we kind of give back to the community. Um, but most of you are in doTERRA already, and so I don't really have to go into any of that. But um, that is how we subsidize. Mm -hmm. So buy oils from us. For <laughs> uh, us. Buy oils. Yeah, yeah. And you're still uh, buying through us. Yeah. yeah. Through us. yeah. yeah. We're all um, just all big family. family. We're a family. Oh, a big family. Yes. You know, I've been processing this whole thing. Yes. And the obvious way to cut down sugar is to quit eating the donuts and the cookies and stuff like that. But are you saying that we should look at every package and if mm -hmm. that has sugar on some, which most things yeah. have in it, yeah. we were you could just like... Look at the first three to five things on the back of any package. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because even if you stitch down to the third one, it could be pure cane sugar, um, it, because the one they yeah. so you want to look at those first three to five things. Three right? ingredients, I yeah. can say. So, so I don't, look, it's real obvious that they're adding all the sugar in. Mm -hmm. What do you go do, like, 
creating your own ketchup or something out of squished tomatoes? No. Or Switch to sriracha. Uh -huh. So that's what we did. <laughs> salsa, homemade. Yeah, we do salsa, <laughs> we do yeah. sriracha. Hopefully we do, we that. still do barbecue okay. sauce, right. we still do all that stuff. We do that, it's just we don't, we don't drink, we have no orange juice, we have no juice in the house, we have no soda in the house, we have no, and we just wash everything else, and we don't have any snacks in the house, really. We do cookies, so we do the, um, like, Toll House cookies, and we'll have a couple of those at night, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And when you were talking about tomato soup, I have a recipe that has no sugar in it. Oh, I yeah. need that recipe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need that. I, what I was going to say is the other the other outcome of all of this sugar mm -hmm. is inflammation. And inflammation. And then well, we absolutely. that yes. inflammation is the cause for all disease. Yeah. Even heart disease. Yes. Yeah. And yep. so that's the other horrible thing that comes from sugar. sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. Just. Okay. So I come from a family of dad <laughs> who likes his sugar. That's but, why you know, it's not good I know. How's that working relationship going? <laughs> but, you know, so I, but now that I'm an adult, I can tell the difference with the amounts of sugar I have and stuff. And one of my kids started having some health problems in a few weeks, well, a few months ago, I should say, for a couple weeks. We really watched in our house the sugar intake. And I mean, it was like one day we wouldn't have hardly any extras, and the next day they might have something, and you, I mean, with all the kids, you can tell the difference, but especially with her. But I kind of say that to say, we didn't go hog wild on it. It was very much the obvious, you know, you don't need that cookie. How about a carrot? <laughs> you know, it was more substituting the obvious, this really isn't that good for you for a, a healthier option. We didn't check the labels. It was just, let's start with those really obvious mm -hmm. things that aren't necessities. You know, we don't necessarily have to go get the nutty bar, <laughs> you know, when I'm needing something to munch on. Because a lot of times that snack need is just, it's almost a chef's thing, you know. And get a carrot for crying out loud, it does something. <laughs> just crunch it. But I say that say, in the beginning, just from someone who it's overwhelming to think of doing anything different in our house. I have four kids, and I am, should have brought my calendar. I'm crazy busy right now. It's just cutting out those obvious, you know, let's, let's, it's more of an experiment. That's how we took it on. Right. And most of the, the kids were on board with it, too. Let's just experiment and see. We can go without that for right now. And like I said, we didn't check labels. We just took the obvious. Start small, and then Otherwise it's, it's one step, and then the next step, and then the next step. But when you check those labels, you'll be surprised. Because I thought yogurt, you know, those little, what are those, yogurts? Yeah, yogurt. Or even those sticks. So, yeah, sticks. yeah, yogurts. Yeah. Those are loaded with sugar. So now, like, I don't ever buy those. So when I go to the grocery store, I kind of know what to get and what not to get. So I'm not, like checking the labels all the time because I know to get eggs, I know to get avocados, I know to get chicken right. sausage, I know to get chicken, I know like what to get and what not to get. But if there's something that I don't know, then I'll look at the label and go from there. So if I make the muffins that have three bananas in them, then I could eat four muffins and that would equal one banana because they make a little over a dozen. And there's no sugar and no flour, right. so I would only have the sugar content of one banana. One banana. Mm -hmm. There's always that <laughs> banana debate. Every week it's like the egg. Yeah, are they good egg for you? Should you not eat right. bananas? Should you eat bananas? Should you not? Bananas are fairly high in, in, in fructose. Moder it's yeah. moderation. Um, so you have to be moderation, careful with that. Right. And, and also, like... People, there's that whole smoothie craze, but the problem is you eat more, or you drink the more, when you're, like, you'll, people usually don't sit down and, and have, like, 12, um, 12 strawberries, but they'll drink them very quickly, and, and that's the problem, is that it's a volume issue, usually. That's the problem, and when you're drinking something, it's much faster and easier for you to get in your system, and you're, 
it, your blood sugar rises so quickly when you're drinking it as opposed to you are getting some of the fiber and that's good and that slows it down but it, it, the smoothies become a volume problem usually that's that's the problem um, same with orange juice and all of those but that's certainly a volume problem all right, can we yeah. do the drawing? Yeah. Right. So I totally did not plan this, but this is a way to use sugar. Make <laughs> sugar scrubs, okay? <laughs> Get rid of it. <laughs> so this is peppermint it's sugar scrub. It's for your hands, your skin, your body. You put it in your shower. Um, all right, so here we go. Shake it all the way. Just kind of push your hand in there and go like, okay. Oh. Shake your teeth. my teeth. Nine seven nine four seven three one. Yay! There we go. Yay! 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 Eating consistently and like making sure you don't get so hungry that you don't think about what you're eating. So like mm -hmm. breakfast, snack, lunch, girl snack, Three. and keep keep consistent so that you're you're feeding your brain and you don't really end up just like <coughs> going for the bag of yes. chips or yep. whatever. You can you don't kind of control yourself. that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I've been doing like a clean eating thing since January 9th. And it went off really fast at the beginning, but I still am losing a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and just because I'm eating cleaner yeah. and really just, and now I don't even like, I don't even think about it really. I go for the good thing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. And I have cake if I want to, or, you know. Yeah, I know, I'm, not, cream donut, I'm not crazy, like, militant about it, because yeah. I'll still have yeah. Well, I think Stuff, the more you cut it out 100% is yeah. that then you get to a point where you're desperate and where you're going to eat everything that's got sugar. Yeah, you have to be real careful. Yeah. Like, you yeah. just really can't. Right. Have